Well, I have some very good news to start off with this video. You don't have to worry about another international break until March. Hallelujah, because I'm sick of the international breaks. Every single time I do a video after an international break, I moan that there's been an international break. Because it's boring, man. I mean, there's no football on the weekend. But thankfully that's coming back because West Ham are going to be facing the Portugal national football team, also known as Wolverhampton Wanderers, at the Molyneux Stadium. Following the conclusion of the final international break of 2021, West Ham United is back in action and travels to Wolves on Saturday. Um, this is a game where West Ham are going in in very high spirits, trying to actually, and it is going to be said, fight to get Champions League football and even, you could say, fight to get a Premier League title. Because West Ham's now kind of in the title race. If you know what I'm saying... West Ham's, what, third in the league, Wolves are eighth, and although Wolves endured a rocky start to the season, they are starting to pick things up again. Um, against Wolves last season, it was quite entertaining. There was the 4-0 win at London Stadium, followed by the 3-2 win at Molyneux, which Jesse Lingard scored that absolutely fantastic solo goal and ran more or less the full length of the pitch and chipped it over the keeper as he was diving to score. Um, a game against an opposition that has been struggling a little bit, but is starting to finally get its form back at last. I'm going to be talking about Wolves in, in a nutshell, to give you some more detail. In keeping with the more recent tradition at the club and the Portuguese connection, a Portuguese manager was replaced with a Portuguese manager. Nuno Espirito Santo left Wolves at the end of the season, moved to Tottenham, and his replacement was former Benfica boss Bruno Lega. Lega has actually been in the Premier League before. He was assistant to Carlos Calvajal when Calvajal was managing Swansea City back in 2017-2018. But Lega's had a bit of a rocky start to his time in the black country. Having won one of his first four games, there were fans who were some calling for his head and some saying that he should resign due to differences in agreeing with the transfer policy. Um, but he stayed on and uh, following another loss, Wolves went on a bit of a good run. And when I say a bit of a good run, I mean it was actually quite good because they ended up winning four, drawing once and losing once. And... I have to say, they are now getting back into the mix to qualify for the Europa League. Despite the slow start to the season and actually dropping into the relegation zone at one point, Lager's actually changed his team around for the better. He's got Raul Jimenez back from his severe and horrible skull injury that he got last year. Jimenez is back and it's a big boost to the whole team. He's signed um, new players that have given the attack different life. Um... One of those players actually is someone who I wanted West Ham to get and they didn't end up getting. He's got, I'll talk about that in a little bit actually, um, Trincao's come in from Barcelona, which is a class, class little bit of business. He signed Jose Sarr from Olympiacos. Sarr has impressed me in goal for them. He's been a really good goalkeeper. And um, I think that with the players that he's got and the team that he has right now, um, Wolves can actually challenge for the Europa League spot again. They're not going to make it easy for West Ham. They haven't done in the past. We struggled against them soon after they got promoted back to the Premier League. But hopefully, um, with West Ham in good spirits and rejuvenated after an international break, things could change. And I think it's going to be quite an exciting game. I have already mentioned his name, but I have to talk about Raul Jimenez in a little bit more detail. Absolutely fantastic striker. In the 2019-20 season, he had 17 goals in 38 games and played in every single game that season. Season after, though, something very terrible happened to him during a game against Arsenal where he broke his skull. Very scary for him, his family and his teammates. But after a long recovery and him taking the recovery seriously and just getting re um, some rehab done, he's been able to slowly get back to the full contact of the game. 
He scored twice so far this season. And if anything, he's become more of an assisting striker because he's helping out South Korean international Hwang Hee Chan, who was linked with West Ham United and is going to be the one that kind of got away. Why? Because in his first six games for Wolves, he scored four goals. And it is nicknamed the Bull because of his style of play and the fact that his name closely resembles the Korean word for Bull. Hwang Yee Chang is a player that I would have liked West Ham to get, but it didn't happen because Moyes insisted that he didn't need a striker. Absolute genius, that. I mean, love you, Moyes. I'll say it so many times, but it was genius of you not to sign Hwang Hee Chang, wasn't it? Yeah, you know. Also going to be talking about no other than Ruben Neves. Why? Because I think he's very important for their whole midfield. Excellent set-piece taker as well. Keeps things really organised in the midfield. Really um, intelligent and tactically aware player. And um, a full Portugal international as well. Neves has been linked with a move away from Wolves for quite some time. Um, he's been compared to João Moutinho because of his touches and his distribution of the ball. And even though he's a defensive midfielder, he has a lot of attacking traits in him. And I wouldn't have guessed, actually, he was a defensive midfielder. I thought he was more of an attacking midfielder. But to find out he was a defensive midfielder surprised me. Why? Because he's way more attacking and he's way more of a threat than what people may expect. Although he may not necessarily be a very well-liked player at West Ham because of how he treated the club in the end, Paul Ince did play for both West Ham United and Wolverhampton Wanderers. The midfielder is better known for his stints at Manchester United and Liverpool, but it was with West Ham where he started his career in 1986. He left in 1989 to join Manchester United, and after six years playing at Old Trafford, he moved to Inter Milan for two years, where he worked under Roy Hodgson. He then moved to Liverpool in 1997 and stayed there till 1999. He later played for Middlesbrough and then joined Wolves in 2002, making 115 appearances and being part of the side that won promotion to the Premier League in 2003. He left Wolves in 2006, briefly played for Swindon Town and Macclesfield Town, the latter of whom he was a manager of. He then managed uh, Milton Keynes Dons for two different spells, was the first black British manager to manage in the Premier League when he took over Blackburn in 2008. He's also managed Notts County and Blackpool. His son Tom is also a professional football player. I'm going to say um, a win for West Ham, but I can't see where it's going to be. I can't really decide whether it's going to be a, um, a scrappy 1 0 or a 2 1 win. I can see Wolves scoring against us because. Um, they're just very, very fast-playing team. They have been known to put on a show when they've played, played us in the past. We have struggled to keep clean sheets against them. I know we kept one against them last season, but I'm just saying in general. Um, I'm going to say 2-1 to West Ham. I think that's a fair enough result. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Opposition Covered. It's great to be back getting these videos out again. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. I'll be watching the game on Saturday and hoping to give some post-game coverage after that. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you all soon.